In the life cycle of any competitive game, there comes a time when a surprise character will rumble up from the depths of the tier list to the very top. In Ultimate, that's... Well, a, a handful of characters, honestly. But the most iconic tier list glow up of them all belongs to Mr. Game & Watch. To see just how crazy the tier jump has been for Game & Watch, you can take a look at the tier list Inctivate makes by aggregating the opinions and lists of the pros. Game & Watch goes from 1.3 to 3.1. In other words, he went from a low tier to a solid high tier in what felt like no time and with no patch changes. And if you want to bring your play to the next level, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. We've got live coaching, sessions from pros, and a growing database of character info that might just help make your main look busted too. But you can suffer from success, and mo mains can mean mo problems. Now, Game & Watch's 2D head is on the nerf block. He went from being low tier hero to up B down air the character in about a month. So, should Nintendo nerf Game & Watch? That question might be harder to answer than you think. Regardless of if you're frothing at the mouth about his out-of-shield options, or you just don't think he's that big of a deal. It's such a tough question that this time, we're not here to feed you an answer. Instead, we're gonna present the cases for and against the nerf of Game & Watch, and leave it to all of you to discuss. And we're gonna do this by looking at factors that get characters nerfed. Mainly, matchup spread and meta dominance, tournament results, annoyance factor, and of course, just how good the character's kit is. So get ready, folks, because Nerf Court is in session, and today, all of you will be the jury. The first piece of evidence is Game & Watch's kit. This 2D god has one of the best defensive tool sets in Ultimate. His up special alone would give him a high tier defense. Coming out at frame 3, this is one of the fastest out of shield options in the game, and will punish any attack that isn't fully safe. To make matters better for Game & Watch, most characters can't punish him after he uses it. The up special boosts Game & Watch out of jump reach for most characters, plus he can act out of it. So, while you can bait most out of shield options out and punish them, you can't do that with Game & Watch. And his incredible defense doesn't end there. His down air has a big disjointed hitbox that's super maneuverable and tricky to punish. Between that and his forward air, which is frame 10 and safe on shield, he doesn't have trouble landing. Thought you could ledge trap or edge guard Game & Watch? Think again. His up special has invulnerability frames. And if he's in trouble at the ledge, he can drop down then jump in neutral air to ledge. It's also super hard to react to his ledge options because not only do his animations look the same, but they're so stuttered that it feels like they happen instantly. The ambiguity in his animations helps out his offense too. At the highest levels of Smash, a lot of the battle comes down to trained reactions. The top pros aren't necessarily reacting to purely new scenarios they've seen before but they're often reacting to startup animations that can indicate not just a move, but an entire pattern. To make Game & Watch feel really retro, Nintendo basically cut out in between frames on the animation. So instead of a fluid motion of someone pulling themselves up to ledge, you get Game & Watch kind of just blinking there. The same happens with almost all of his animations, to the point where it's even hard to read his dashes. Your ambiguity is a hugely underrated part of Game & Watch's kit that makes him really good and really frustrating in the right hands. But we'll get more to the frustration factor. Those ambiguous animations couple well with the super off-kilter offensive game. We talked about this a lot in our Game & Watch guide, but Game & Watch basically breaks the rules of Smash. His up smash has armor and is safe on shield, his down smash can anti-air for some reason, and his forward air, well... It's just bizarre all around. Game & Watch has so many unique options that you need to change game plans based off of what he's throwing out. And it's hard to do that when his animations don't clearly signal what he'll do. And even if they did, Game & Watch would still have a great offense. So, Game & Watch can spam one move, say a smash attack or aerial, spot dodge his opponent's attempt to whiff punish, then forward or down tilt for a kill. If all that weren't enough, Game & Watch has down throw and neutral air setups into his side special Judge, meaning he can cheese out early kills. If all that weren't enough, Game & Watch can edge guard with down air and back air, he can two frame with dash attack or down smash, he can ledge trap with chef, and yeah, yeah, now you're starting to understand why Meister thinks this character is, is top tier. Cause he, uh, kinda cheats a little bit, you know, he's a little bit of a, he's a little bit of a cheater! The stupid cheater character cheater for baby stupid dumb cheater character cheat. But Game and Watch does have weaknesses. Primarily, Game and Watch is light. He's tied with Squirtle for the third lightest character in the game. He can still live longer than you'd think though, because he can escape disadvantage rather easily. But if you catch Game and Watch slipping, he'll die early. 
Game & Watch also struggles against characters who can outspace him with disjoints. Ranged characters struggle against Game & Watch because of his bucket. It'll absorb or reflect projectiles, and when it's full, Game & Watch can use it as a kill move that has... Jesus, Nintendo. Only two frames of, of startup? Okay, I guess... I guess that's the way it's gonna be. But mid-ranged characters with big disjoints like ZSS, the Sorties, Palutena, or even Joker can give Game & Watch trouble. They can space safe aerials on a shield that he can't hit with up special or beat out with his aerials. Not to mention, they have their own out-of-shield options that can punish his offense. Game & Watch's lightweight and poor hitboxes do make him a lot harder of a character than people suspect. Yeah, we get it. His up B is brain-dead, stupid, dumb, trash-brain, caveman, cheater baby good. And his quick moves make him look like a masher's delight. But if you click the wrong button as Game & Watch, you get red as Game & Watch, and you die at 80%. This is why, even though he's got his rep as an easy character, Game & Watch isn't dominant at a casual or low level. It's why it takes a very unpredictable player like Meister to unlock his potential. Now let's take a look at the next piece of evidence. Matchups and the meta. We already covered that he loses to sorties and good mid-range characters, but let's cover Game & Watch's full matchup spread and how he fits in the meta. To get the best idea of his matchup spread, we should look to the player who knows him best. Here's a glance at Meister's recent matchup chart. Now, we don't just want to look at how many good or bad matchups our two-dimensional friend has. We want to see how many relevant good and bad matchups he has. Ultimate has such a large cast that even top tiers will take losses to random mid and low tiers. To evaluate Game & Watch's strength in the meta, we want to measure how he does against popular and good characters he'll need to beat. This is where we finally see the God Emperor of Flat Zone bleed. Game & Watch has bad or even matchups into some of the most globally popular and successful characters around. ZSS, Palutena, Krom, Lucina, Joker, Wolf, Yoshi, Olimar, Cloud? All these characters have good representation at every level of play. He does style on relevant characters like Snake, Rob, Pika, and Pichu, Inkling, and Fox, though. So, even though Game & Watch doesn't have the best position in the meta, he still has a better spot than a lot of the cast. Since he loses to a lot of popular characters, Game & Watch isn't that meta-dominant himself. One of the chief reasons to nerf a character is that they centralize the meta by getting picked constantly. We don't see that with Game & Watch. According to SSB World's usage statistics, he's a bit above average with just over 1% usage. That matches with the eye test too. You'll see Meister and maybe one or two other Game & Watches in a major. But being meta-dominant isn't just about play rate, it's also about win rate. Let's move on to the next piece of evidence, tournament results. The most obvious reason to nerf a character is because they win too much. Game & Watch is consistently in top 8, but mostly because of Meister. Like Pikachu, Game & Watch has one potential top 10 player maining him, followed by various regional players. Game & Watch has a consistently well-placing player in about every big region. He's also becoming a more favored secondary pick with players like Zachary and the Great Gonzalez. But this is on par with most top and high tiers, apart from Joker, Palutena, Peach, and ZSS, who are all hyper-relevant. Now that we've covered results, let's get to the last and most damning piece of evidence. Annoyance Factor. The prosecution would like to present to the jury the indisputable fact that Mr. Game & Watch is annoying as hell! I know what you're thinking. Annoying? That's no reason to nerf a character. Well, let me tell you something. It's not just a reason to nerf a character. It's one of the biggest reasons. Truth is, Nintendo wants people to play and watch Ultimate as much as possible. In order to drive that engagement up, Nintendo will nerf annoying characters. If you don't believe it, remember that Nintendo still hasn't fixed Olimar's shield. Ouch. Olimar took some of the hardest nerfs of any early top tier in Ultimate, and it was because he was good and annoying. And he was annoying for much the same reasons as Game & Watch. Where Game & Watch has up special, Olimar had up smash. Where Game & Watch had down smash in neutral, Olimar had forward smash. They're even similar down to their small hurtbox, their lightweight, and how they invalidate a lot of the cast. The main difference is, Olimar was more successful in the early days of Ultimate. At his prime, Olimar had incredible showings from Myron to Buzz and Shutan. Even regional Olimars like I'm Hip, Army, and Go McKempy had upset wins over top 50 players and top 32 placings at majors. Still, fact is, people hate to face and increasingly hate to watch Game & Watch. That's bad news for the granddaddy of portable gaming, because it could mean he gets the Olimar treatment. But should he? Do Game & Watch or Olimar deserve this? 
That's a much trickier question to answer. On one hand, if the meta fills up with characters that the audience and player base find annoying or dull, it threatens to reduce the player and viewer base. That in turn threatens the entire game's ability to get the attention of sponsors, the media, and the developer. Essentially, the game's ability to survive. But on the other hand, we tend to overstate the effect of the crowd least favorite. For one of our news articles, I broke down viewership data around Hungrybox's Jigglypuff. I wanted to see if he was truly driving views down. The answer was a clear, emphatic no. Views tended to go up when that infamous puff showed up because people wanted to see if anybody could pop the bubble, pop the bubble. So let's apply the same lens to Olimar and Game & Watch. Could viewership rise as people root against the character? At Congo Saga, we do see a drop of nearly 4,500 viewers, from about 43k to about 38.5k as Meister enters to fight Tweak. And we can see another drop of about 4k viewers at Ultimate Summit 2, about 47k to about 43k when Meister comes to face Nairo. For the last example we'll use, we have the Big House 9 where Meister and Buzz faced off in a tight 5-game set where a Summit spot was on the line. Right after Tweak loses to Zachary, Meister and the Buzz come on and viewership drops nearly 8k, around 50.5 to 42.5 thousand. However, as the set progresses, viewership rises back to a rough peak of 48k. So context does matter. While these are only three examples, they aren't cherry picked. They're just three recent majors where Meister has done well and shown up on stream. And they show that, unlike Melee Puff, the raw vitriol around Game & Watch seems to drive viewership down. But is that enough reason to nerf Game & Watch? Honestly? I don't know. It's a tough question that's bound to get different answers from all of you, and even from all of us at Pro Guides. We can at least sort of tell that Game & Watch is annoying enough to actually drop views. And he's probably caused a few rage quits online too. But is that enough to nerf a character who isn't sweeping tournaments or crowding out top 32? It's so hard to say that, honestly, I'm glad I don't have to. Good luck with this one, Nintendo!